Hey, welcome to the Science Masterclass with Mr. Salagaris. Today we're going to learn about chemical formulas. Um, this video here is jam-packed with a whole bunch of pretty tricky concepts and stuff. So chances are you're probably going to have to pause it, re-watch it, uh, and go back over it again to make sure that you understand it. Please do that because this stuff is very important uh, foundational stuff for Year 9. Okay, so let's talk about compounds and molecules. Groups of atoms with different, uh, sorry, groups of atoms with a definite structure are called molecules or compounds. Uh, there's a difference between the two that we're going to learn about soon. Each has its own chemical formula that shows what atoms there are and how many of those atoms there are. Okay, for an example, we've got H2O. We've got two atoms of hydrogen, one atom of oxygen. This might be ringing some bells for some of you. Okay, so molecules are two or more of the same element joined together. An example of that is O2 or oxygen. Compounds are two or more of the same and or different elements joined together. An example of that is H2O where you've got two hydrogen and one oxygen atom bonded together. Okay, you need to know the difference between the two molecules and compounds. Okay, what are bonds? The way that two atoms are bonded together, so connected or joined, determines the particular properties such as the strength, melting point, and conductivity. So it's important to know that because in compounds and molecules, you've got bonds of atoms. Uh, so those bonds then determine uh, the properties of that molecule or substance. Okay, chemical formula. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. Uh, when different compounds, molecules, or atoms combine, uh, these are the reactants, they react with each other to form a new compound called a product. Okay, let's look at this diagram here. We've got uh, this at the front plus this here. Okay, what is that? What is that? Okay, we've got molecules here reacting with another molecule here. So these are the reactants. We know that they're reactants because they come before the arrow symbol here. The arrow symbol means produces uh, what these two reactants uh, produce when they react with each other is a product. Okay, the product comes last. Reactants are first. Let me go over that again. So when I've got two molecules, atoms, or compounds reacting with each other, they're called the reactants, and they produce something called a product. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Reactants come first, produces a product. Okay, chemical formulas can be written in both words and symbols. Okay, we've got symbols at the top, so the element symbols here, and then we've got words down the bottom here. Okay, so I've got uh, the word formula for this chemical formula up the top. So I've got hydrogen, when it reacts with oxygen gas, it produces water. So that's how you would read it. So when hydrogen gas, H2, reacts, the plus, with oxygen gas, O2, it produces arrow water, H2O. That's the product. Okay, you guys can have a go at doing this one here in your own time. Identify the products and the reactants of the following. Remember that the reactants come first. They're two compounds, elements, or atoms that react with each other to produce something, um, to produce a product. Okay. So what I've got here is some element names, but also some element symbols. Have a go at doing that one in your own time. Okay, naming elements in formulas, metals, uh, for example, metals and non-metals. This is uh, a little bit confusing, but tricky. Hopefully this analogy that I'll use will help you get your head around it. When a metal and a non-metal element combine, the non-metal changes its name, uh, often by adding IDE to its name. Think of like two people when they get married. The metal is the husband and the non-metal the wife. When they tie the knot, the wife changes her last name, but the husband keeps the same. So the wife changes, the husband keeps the same. We can relate that to metals and non-metals. You can imagine that the metal is the male or the man. Uh, that one doesn't change his name, but the non-metal is the female who changes her last name. So for example, when I have sodium and chlorine, Sodium's the metal, chlorine's the non-metal. They react to produce um, the product of sodium chloride. See how the sodium remains the same because it's the male, the metal, and the non-metal adds IDE to the N. So it replaces the I-N-E to I-D-E. 
okay, so the non-metal, sodium chloride, okay. You can practice that by having a go identifying the metals and non-metals in these word formulas here, okay. Remember that the non-metal changes its name, the metal keeps its name, okay. Metal comes first and then the non-metal comes second in the reactants and the products. All right, give these elements the correct endings and label them as metal and non-metal by adding IDE to each of these ones uh, if you think that it's necessary. So you'll need your periodic table to identify which of these are metals and which are non-metals. Remember the non-metals change their name because they're the females when they get married, change the last name. Okay. Let's get more complicated. Complex compounds use suffixes, so things like ITE, ATE, OUS, or IC. So suffixes are like endings to words, so they change the endings of a word. Um, complex compounds require the use of these suffixes. Uh, the use of these endings is determined by the amount of oxygen in the compound. The less oxygen um, means that the ending would be something like ITE or OUS, and the more is ATE or IC. Um, you don't have to know particularly about that, you just need to be able to memorize uh, these particular polyatomic ions. So hydrochloric acid, so you've got the IC there, sulfuric acid, you've got IC, um, you've got sodium chloride, IDE on there, um, and then you've got some others here as well. So these are ones that you need to know both the name and the chemical formula for and vice versa. Okay, here is an activity where you can uh, write either the word or the symbol for the formula following. Uh, try not to cheat by looking back at the previous one, but if you need to, that's good practice as well. Okay, interpreting chemical formulas often have a numbers uh, to indicate how many atoms there are. We've done a bit of practice with this before. So the chemical name of nickel sulfite, see uh, we've got a, uh, a suffix ending there. So it's sulfur with the ITE, meaning that there's some oxygen present there. The chemical formula is NiSO3, so three atoms of oxygen. Uh, and then we've got the name and number of each element in the chemical. So we've got one nickel, one sulfur, and three oxygen atoms present there. Okay, here are some prefixes. Prefixes are opposite to suffixes. They come before a word. Okay, when there are more than one of the same atom in a compound, you need to use a prefix. Okay, a prefix is placed before the name, e.g. dioxide for O2. Okay. Uh, you need to remember these and how many um, how many atoms it represents or the number that it represents. So mono meaning like one and then deca like ten. You have to memorize all those ones because they're important. Okay, you can see how many atoms are present by looking at the number below the symbol. Adding a prefix to this would make it dilithium. Okay, there are two lithium atoms there. Okay, have a go at some of these ones here. We've got uh, Be2, so uh, two atoms of beryllium there. Uh, we've got something like N10. Use your prefixes. Uh, and then for the second activity, you can go vice versa in, in working out uh, how many atoms of, uh, say, heptachlorine there are. Okay, hey, thanks for watching that one. I know there was jam-packed full of stuff. Make sure you go back, watch it again. I know it was particularly long. Um, important to get your head around some of these concepts here because they'll help you out later on. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel, like this video, and make sure you watch it again.